All right, guys and girls, welcome to another episode of Astro Auto Repairs. <laughs> Can you dig it? All right, guys, check it out. Behind me, I got a 2003 Jaguar S-Type. S stands for Superman. All right, today, this is what the customer's complaint is. Customer's complaint is uh, two years ago, driving along, car surging, shut off, tried to start back up, would not start, sat here for two years. You definitely don't want to let your car set that long. So we got a brand new battery. We're going to check it out and see what is going on. Coming up on Astral Auto Repairs. This channel is a member of the Astral Stars, which means we have a zero tolerance policy against the harassment of others. Anybody who violates that policy will be banned. For further information, please visit www.theastralstars.com. All right, guys. Um, the car, as again, the car, the car has been sitting for two years, and that is not good for a vehicle, especially because the gas starts going stale. So I don't. Hopefully, we don't run into any problems. Now here's our other problem. The car was surging, all kind of problems, a misfire. Now we doubt it, but there's hopefully there's a little bit of juice in here. I don't know, but um, once we the the any kind of codes that was in the computer is probably gone now. If this battery went completely, completely dead, so we got an issue with that. You know what, guys? What we're gonna do is let's let's test something out. What we're gonna do is take our jumper. Let's hook it up to this battery and let's see if it has any codes in it before we actually disconnect them. The codes are going to help us out a lot. All right, we'll be right back. All right, guys, we got our jumper here. And again, this, guys, having a, getting a, a code, that is so important when diagnosing a vehicle. And I've messed up before and I've went and disconnected the battery or did something before I try to pull any codes. And it makes your diagnosing all just that more difficult. So, set this, up, set this right here. All right. Cut it on. I hear some beeping. Hear some beep. We got power. All right, let's hook up our Ortel AL. No, I'll tell. I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> we'll be right back. All right, guys. I'm going to be out the way so you can see it. But the diagnostic connector is located up under the dashboard to the right of the steering column. You got that, Sivvy? I got it. All right. So, back up, Sivvy. Don't tell me what to do. Let's get this thing plugged up. Huh. All right. Guys, grab your Ortel. AL539. Yeah, buddy B. <laughs> All right, let's put the key on and let's see if we got any codes. We'll be right back. Alright guys, I saw four codes come up. Uh, let's read codes. Oh man, okay, what we got here? What happened? I thought you already read them. I did, I don't know what the heck. It does this sometimes. Jaguar. Okay. PO305, cylinder 5 misfire. Uh, Miss Catalyst Damage Fault. Uh oh, <laughs> that's a sucky one. That's like a. I might, well, I might well say that's a PO420 and all. Misfire Rate Catalyst Damage. Yeah, I mean, it failure It's going to damage it. Injector Circuit. Uh, now this one might be like the BMWs have it that the injector will shut off when it detects a misfire. So we're not going to worry about that one too much. And P1000, refer to vehicle service. I'm not going to worry about that one. But let's concentrate on P0305. So what we're going to do now, and it's weird, guys. Check this out. I got the key on. Now, first of all, that's a, that, this thing has been sitting for two years. A lot of water has been building up in here. So I, I'm not liking this. And then on our gauges, our RPM gauge, it was working, 
And then all of a sudden it went up and stopped at about 21, 2200 RPM. Um, hope we don't have no electrical issue here. What happens if I try to start this without jumper on it? Maybe I gotta step on the brake. With a key? Huh? With a key? I don't know. It ain't doing nothing though. No. It ain't doing nothing. ain't doing nothing. Alright, I don't, I really don't think that's how, that's gonna be if we hook up the new battery, it's gonna it's gonna fix that. <laughs> but but holy cow. Um Alright guys, you know we're gonna we're gonna hook it up anyway. He got a new battery, we'll hook it up. If it if it don't work, we'll just disconnect one terminal. Wow. Alright, so we're gonna disconnect this and let's get that battery connected. We'll be right back. Alright guys, I'm not gonna sit here and bore you with replacing this battery. You didn't get this bad. You didn't get. You watch this video <laughs> to see about the battery. But um, we got a five sixteenths wrench or eight millimeter to take off the terminals. And are these eight millimeters, well, yeah, eight millimeter, eight millimeter on everything. So, right, Sevy, we ain't gonna sit here and show them how to change the battery, right? Right. That's what's up. All right, so let's get this battery changed, guys, and we'll be right back. Ready? All right, guys, just finish. Tightening this up. Make sure this one tightened up. And we did notice that once I connected it, the lights in here came on. But uh, which is weird. I don't know why. This jumper's supposed to. This is freshly charged, man. Let's put the old battery right in there. All right. Where are the keys at? In the car, I think. Where the keys, baby? No key in the car. In the car. All right. Let's put these tools up, guys. And then we'll be right back. All right, guys, let's see what we got now. Uh. Um, hmm. I'm not sure if this is some security feature or what, but RPM gauge is, is still acting up. All right, you know what, guys? Let's let's try something here. Let's go out here. Let's uh, close the door. Make sure that this is closed. Let's close the trunk. All right. Lock it. No, it's not locking. Let's try the doors. Okay, that's locked. Okay, it's unlocked. Let's try it now. Nothing. Oh, man. There's nothing really. Hmm. Nothing at all. All right. Then now this see this turns into a different diagnostics here because right now we got we don't even have nothing. So how can we diagnose what's wrong with the car when we got this issue? So, you know, what do you do with the customer at that point? Because this is like two separate diagnosing or diagnostics right here. So what do you do, Sivvy? Well, you have to explain to them. I mean, I can, uh, 
I can go out there and, and if it, if the starter is easily accessible, I can just check it to see. But it's not even clicking. What about if I put it in neutral? What was that? Well, I thought I can put it in neutral, you know. Son of a biscuit. Alright, let's pop the hood. Let's see if it go up under there and see what's going on. We'll be right back. Alright guys, we're not going to get too much into this because this might turn out to be more of a electrical issue. Okay, so what we're going to do, first of all, is pop this cover off, the power distribution box. And you're going to have a relay right here. This is the starter relay. Four wires is going to this relay. Two wires is going to the computer, one wire is going to a fuse, and another wire is going right down to the starter. Just from right here, we can check out what the heck is going on. Alright, so, let's, um, you know what I'm about this, guys? If they're going to put a battery in the trunk, there should always be a post out here to jump the vehicle. There should always be. Why they didn't put one? I have no idea. It should be out there, right in the open. So we got the trunk back open. I'm gonna hook up my power probe, and then we're gonna do some testing. Bear right back. All right, guys. Now we got our power probe here. Now um, let's test what we got here. Uh, absolutely nothing. Okay, this one we got 12 volts. Okay, that's cool. This one we got nothing. And this one we have a. Ground. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that this one is going down to the starter. Now, but this is going directly down to the starter. So I hit 12 volts right now. The starter should at least click. I don't know if I have enough power in here. Oh yeah, buddy, look at that, guys. All right, so we know the starter does kick in. We know we got power over here. Now what we're supposed to have is look. Okay, I'm gonna assume these two wires right here. Let's check this one right here. When I put the key on that one should be hot or this one's going to be wait a minute one of these should have been grounded why is both of them you know hold that right there so i don't put the key on and let me know what that does so he wants me to hold hold the camera and see what it does that's right yeah boy oh my gosh do that again 12 volts, I think. 12 volts? Yeah. Want me to do it again? Yeah. <coughs> yeah, 12. Okay, that's good. Now for the one across from it, this one, when we do it, that one should be, when I hit the key to the start position, that one should be grounded. Grounded. So what is it supposed to do? It's going to beat, but it's going to be green. Oh. Okay, nothing. There's nothing. our issue right here. And that wire is going right to uh, the computer. So what we're going to do, let's go back over here. All right. Now see, that's what it should have did. Now what I'm going to do, let's shut this noise off. Please. Let's find out. If something's wrong with the computer, it could be a fuse or something. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put the key in the on position, jump the starter out, and see if the car starts. Okay, right now i got the key in the on position. Let's find out. Of course it won't start. The fuel pump's no good. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of it's sucks because what's going on here <coughs> is, um, you know, so what I want you to do is hit the 12 volts today, and I'm going to just open the, the throttle up. Hit the little button? Yep, you're going to hit it forward. Which is means this way? Yeah. Alright. When? Oh, you'll let me know? Yep. Okay. Okay, go ahead. I'm so glad Walter told us that the car ran What happened? 
don't know. I hit it. Oh, you got to hold it. I am holding it. Oh, let it go. You hit it forward until that turned red. You gonna hit it? Yeah, that's what I did. Oh, damn it. Damn it, that thing. Circuit okay. cricket. I thought it was the other one. Oh, this one? Yeah. Okay, now. Okay, go ahead. Okay, but it popped again. Why the heck did that thing pop? And I don't see any color. You broke it. You know what, guys? Tell you what, we're gonna do this an easier way. Be right back. All right, guys, I got a little jumper wire right here that we're gonna put right here and what Sylvia's gonna do is just go like and just pull back, just like that while I hold the throttle. All right, okay, Sylvia? But that's a lot of pressure. Yeah, honey. it is. Okay, ready. So guys, what we're going to do is forget this. Now we're going to have to go look at the wiring diagram and the ground to this relay that's going to the ECM. Um, you know what we're going to do? We're gonna, what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to check check these fuses. Man. Let's see if we can check these fuses out. Don't worry about it, Those are probably spares. Says who? A the way lot of spares. Yeah, well, they ain't doing that. All right, these I can't check, but I can look inside and see they're good. Ugh. I think there's another fuse box there. There is? All right, let's go find this other fuse box, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we're on the passenger side on the floor. There's a fuse panel over here. So let's... Pop this cover up. Pull this little pull this off. Alright. All right, what we're gonna do is um put the key in the on position, those lights on the dashboard now. Yeah. Alright guys, I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna check all these fuses and we'll be right back. All right, guys, all the fuses are good, so we're going to put this back. But, wait a minute. Guys, I don't know if y'all can see this bulb right here with my fingers pointing. Yeah? Look how dim that is. What does that mean? There's a short somewhere. When you see, some, when you see a bulb dim like that, that's a short. Maybe something's not making a good connection. I think we're going. I think we were looking at some electrical issues here. All right, it's time to go. We are now in DEFCON 2. <laughs> All right, guys, we need to see what's going on with the complete system. So, what we're going to do is now hook up our Autel MK908. So we can run through all the systems, the theft deterrent, maybe it's a theft deterrent problem. We're going to see if there's codes in any other system of this car that might cause this thing to not start. All right, and you're going to be right with us doing it. We'll be right back. All right, guys, I was just about to get the power probe and I saw they've got another box back here. Let's check uh, these fuses. I got the, I got the uh, key on. Good. Okay, let's 
let's check these back here. When you get that, that just means that's whatever's powering that circuit is just not on yet. What the heck? 4.4 4 volts? That's not good. Okay, that's not on yet. Oh man, guys, we got another one at 4 volts. 4 volts. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. Oh boy. Um, Alright guys, what we're going to do, we're going to pull up a wiring diagram and see, you know, what happened to the old style when you can turn it over and they tell you exactly where all the fuses go to. So we're going to pull that up. Let's find out where them fuses go to. Be right back. Alright guys, we find out they go, some of them go to the reverse lights. One of them goes to the courtesy lights. Check that out. We saw that dim bulb. Reverse lights. Wait a minute. Guys, look at this. Look at that reverse light. I don't know if you can see in here. Why is it on? It's, it's dull. It's shortened. It's shorting out. What about the other one? Same thing. Same thing. We have a short here. All right. Um. Okay. Civi, back up. And I'm gonna put the reverse lights on. And just tell me what we got. The reverse lights? Yeah. I'm gonna step on the brakes and everything. All right. Tell me what happens to both sides. <coughs> All right. Right now. Uh, matter of fact, let's. Uh, I cut on the lights. Okay, hold on, let me check the other side. Uh, you know, it's so bright out here, it's hard to see if they're on. Let, um, okay, wait, you said the lights are on right now? Okay, hold on, I'm going to turn it off. Okay. Okay, I'm turning it off and on. Alright, only one side's coming on, this side. You said this side, like I know this side. <laughs> I'm right here, right by you, Dad Nebbit. <laughs> the left side. Okay, um, now I'm gonna step on the brake. Okay. Okay, I see the left side on, but not the right side. Okay, now I'm gonna put it in reverse. Okay, right side came on, right. But not the left side. Um, signals on the left. Signals on the left. They're on now? Yep. No. Okay, right. Okay, that's on. All right, guys. We got we got a we got we got a, a wiring issue here. You know what? Again, we're gonna come over here. All right, guys, right now we got the key on. <coughs> and I just hooked this up. This is what's going to um, power. This is it's power. It's connected to the diagnostic connector. And what this is going to do a wireless signal to the uh, Autel MK908. So I'm going to just set this up here. And all of us, we're going to go inside. And a we're lot gonna, of people. Yeah, a lot of people there watching this video. Oh, it's a big truck. So okay. and let's go see what do we we have well it ain't gonna tell us about most short but let's see if it anything else it can find we'll be right back all right guys we in here let's go to diagnostics um we got european no no we know we don't what the heck i'm talking about jaguar jaguar gotta go through there we go okay Okay, we're going to go automatic selection. We're going to read the VIN. See if it can read the VIN. I think, honestly, guys, I think we got a serious wiring issue here. And, okay, there's the VIN. Uh, 
So if you want it fixed, we can fix it, but woo. <laughs> All right, and okay. Okay, S-Type 2005, 2003, no, 2002, 2003, base, and okay, okay, yes. All right, we're going to go to di nah, diagnosis. We're going to go to auto scan. Now, on control unit, if we get control unit, we pick out which system we want to go into. But what I want to do, we want to do an auto scan, and it's going to scan a code. It's going to scan every single module up there. And let us know, like for ECM, we got 10 fork codes. Ugh. Transmission, we got one. ABS, it's got to have something. One, the way this thing is, it's got to have, it's got to have something. Or <laughs> every single, ooh, instrument, instrument 14. Ah, oh, man, this is going to, this ain't going to be good, guys. All right, so it's at 31%. When we come back. We're gonna go through 40%. It's still it's still picking it picking up faults in everything. Oh my goodness. So we'll be right back. Alright guys, it finished. Um because we got we got faults in almost everything here. Um T because we wanna find something. I got a feeling man. We just gonna do just okay, we got the, the gem module, we got six. Um let's see where parking aid amplifier oh cool at least a cell phone and voice activation that's good so <laughs> call for help <laughs> ah yeah so you're supposed to be laughing at my jokes the heck? <laughs> what the heck wrong with people man let's see. all right let's uh stop playing around let's uh let's see what the uh engine control module is what these codes are codes now even though we had the Ortel hooked up and we had about what three codes this was it oh no oh, oh yeah we had the other one hooked up it was only had three codes uh miss five we did that one that one rear wheel security speed input. security input there that's a flight recorder data like it's, <laughs> it's a plane the black box is no good generated charge failure oh but I don't think that's generated. I might think it's interior lamp out, closing fuel pump circuit low, high input. Ugh. Of course. Um. That's you like that. Did you guys hit that? That's my trouble. Description, security, input, monitor, condition, start engine. Oh, they guess that ain't anything. Cause <laughs> <coughs> well, ignition key not recognized. Vehicle anti. Def system fault. Check the ignition key is valid for the vehicle. Program the key to the vehicle. But I would I would believe that it would still um, turn the engine over. Uh, okay, you know what? Let's let's escape. Let's erase. And what we're gonna do? Let's see if something comes back real quick. Okay, let's read. Dang, those codes came right back. Okay, fuel pump circuit. Let's see what... Whoops. Battery watch at 12 volts. Idle for 2 minutes. Check. Still can't. Possible causes. Engine control module. To fuel pump control module. I got to feel we got something really bad here, man. Because that's the computer... That means it, it can't turn it, it didn't turn it on. <sighs> Let's escape. Let's escape. <sighs> I need to go back. Escape. Yes, I wanna. Let's escape again. Let's go through some hot functions. No. All right, guys. We'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back at the complete list of all the control modules. And what we're going to do, before we get crazy here, we're going to do a quick erase and erase everything. And then we're going to see what comes back. 
it's like okay the engine control module 2 came back and we're gonna go through this whole thing this one especially the instrument pack the 14 I want to see if that one clears itself out that's the one I'm worried about right there let's say 14 or if I say 15 <laughs> all right we're gonna clear all these out and we're gonna be right back all right guys ready still three on the ECM climate control module has two I don't care about that the gem module one rear electronic control module we noticed there was a module back there it looked like it had some water in it water around it like it's like it's sat in water oh and we did see something matter of fact guys we're gonna go back there and show you we definitely got I, we can't get it. if he wants to get involved with this we definitely gonna be keeping this car for days so we're gonna escape out of here and we're gonna go out there and what we're gonna do is show you that module we we're talking about and we're gonna just turn the key being that we reset everything see if it if it will crank alright we'll be right back alright guys here's what we were talking about now we're not sure if this is the module but it looks like it was a lot of water in here guys and this thing looked like it was been in some water and if so I think we got a serious issue here serious issue but let's go over here to the car I just want to see what the key would do now and I, I already I still noticed that my speed my RPM gauge is like way up there nothing yeah you definitely got an issue here all right we're going to talk to the customer um i personally don't recommend going into this but if you want we can we can do it so we'll see we'll be right back all right so today we had a 2003 jaguar s type and while well, it had multiple issues the main reason why the customer called us was because it was uh, sputtering and then it shut off and then he wasn't able to start it back up but it turned into a big electrical issue because that actually happened two years ago so uh, we spoke to him and he does want it fixed um, it's gonna be a few weeks before we can get to it but make sure you stay tuned to watch those videos but if you guys have any comments or questions you can post it below in the comment section or you can email Timmy at Tim at AstroAutoRepairs.com Hope you paid attention. If not, watch it again. This is Sylvia from Astro Auto Repairs. If we can't repair it, nobody can. See you next time.